Okay, in this video, we're gonna talk about uh, ways to disagree with the dog. Now, I use a series of what I call four escalating consequences. I've derived these after watching how dogs interact with each other, or at least some of them. So the very first thing I wanna do when the dog does something I don't want is I'm gonna to try to warn it before it does the wrong thing. And I do that with a hissing sound like a cat. The word no is the 51st most commonly used word in the English language, and it's used so commonly that dogs actually learn to ignore it and not listen for it anymore. So I use the hissing sound like a cat because cats, skunks, snakes, cougars, mountain lions, even bunny rabbits make a hissing sound as a warning. Mother nature has put it in your dog whether it's met those animals or not. I have 10 hisses. I have a level one hiss, which is like it's, I have a level 10 hiss, which is more like a and you have to match the energy level of your dog or it will not respect you. All right, so the, uh, or won't respect the response. So the first thing I do is I hiss one time before the dog gets to it. If I have a boundary of seven feet around something, the dog's approaching it, when it gets to the eight foot line, that's where I would hiss before it approached or broke the line. Think of the hiss almost as uh, you're in the dog's head and you're, it's its conscience. Um, a nice way to say it would be the hiss is a way of saying, no, don't do that, or most effectively, don't even think about doing that. So again, try to use it as a warning. Timing is really important. Now, uh, if the dog uh, is approaching somebody who's eating food, they hiss and the dog turns, usually turn and walk away. They'll usually do the opposite of whatever they happen to be doing at the time. That's the first escalating consequence. If that doesn't work, or if that works, but then the dog comes back a second time, I need a next step. The next step for me is to abruptly stand up. Standing up is the most authoritative position a human can be in to a dog. And your authority is directional. It goes whatever direction your hips and shoulders are pointing. For dogs, Front facing is confrontational, sideways is approachable, behind is defenseless. If two dogs meet each other, uh, walking straight ahead is confrontational. So if a dog wants to meet another dog, it'll kind of take a little bit of a curved approach as it approaches, or do, they'll kind of approach in a circle. So for this, we want to be strong. We want to make sure we're communicating that we disagree with something. So what we're going to do is we're going to stand up abruptly. And when we do that, the dog's going to take a step backwards because they want what I call escapability. Now, as soon as they do that, they're gonna say, is he talking to me or he just get something bite him in the butt? So what they're, to identify if they're talking to you, they're gonna kind of walk to the side to see if you're following them. So if you, keep, if you pivot and keep the dog in front of your hips, it's like, oh man, she, I know, yeah, she's talking to me. How do I communicate that I don't, want to I, want, I don't want her to think I'm challenging anymore? As a dog, I do that by stopping. So as soon as the dog stops, as a human, you wanna take two steps backwards. Because that's a conversation. When the dog stops moving, he's saying, I understand, I recognize you're warning me. And the human says, I appreciate you recognizing that. And I communicate that by taking two steps back. And just take two steps. Don't take a third step. Don't shift. And try not to move your hands around a lot. Just very crisp. A lot of people, I tell people a lot, of, it's like almost like you're doing a robot. Um, okay, so that's the second consequence, pivoting until the dog is stationary. The dog can also leave the area. If he leaves the area, you can go back to doing what you're doing. Um, you can also sit down when you sit that's a little bit more subordinate So if the dog really wants some food or something you want sitting down is probably going to get it to come back a second time So instead of sitting I would just take a step backwards after you've established this these series of consequences with the dog Then you can go back to more of a sitting uh, and probably get the same response So that's the second escalating consequence is is standing up and turning to face the dog Until the dog is stationary and then taking those two steps backwards the third consequence is about giving and taking territory this is how dogs is a strong way for them to communicate with each other. So, uh, like I mentioned, front facing is confrontational. So what you're going to do for the third consequence is get up, or if you're already up, march at the dog. Now when I say march, I don't mean stomping your feet, I mean moving very briskly towards the dog. So the dog, you want to give them a sudden, you know, kind of like a, a flinching experience. The dog needs to think, if I'm still here when the human gets to me, the human is literally running me over, they're not slowing down and stopping. So don't slow down, stop, and I'll redo this funny little walk that I do. That a lot of people, when they get to the dog, they kind of walk like this, like they're trying to use their shins to bump the dog back. Just walk through them like you normally would, as if the dog is not even there. And the dog needs to learn to defer. Dogs defer to leaders, and so as humans, we need to, to communicate we're a leader. So in this case, we're kind of taking a stronger message. We've already warned the dog not to do it, and corrected it once, and it did it again. So we're going to march directly at the dog, not running, but very suddenly towards it, and we're gonna keep on doing that until the dog communicates to us it's no longer challenging us. And the dog's gonna do this through another movement. Now, if I'm playing the part of the dog and the human's marching at me, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna turn sideways or greater. As soon as I turn sideways or greater, this is more of an approachable position for a dog and this is confrontational. So if I turn sideways when the human's marching towards me, that's my way of saying I've stopped challenging you. So as soon as the dog stops 
moving, you stop. Now with my feet like this, this looks indecisive. So I'd either, I would either retract my foot or move it together so my feet are together facing the dog. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go down to the second consequence I'm gonna pivot when the dog walks around, wait for the dog to be stationary, and then take two steps backwards. If the dog just stands there, I'm just gonna wait and then after a second take those two steps backwards, then I can go back to doing what I was doing. So uh, marching with the dog, like I said, make sure you're moving assertively towards the dog and do not slow down when you get to the dog and, or if you get into him, just walk through him. That's the third consequence. Now the third consequence has a little bit of a caveat. Let's say that there's a fireplace and let's say there's a line right here and as a dog, I'm not allowed to be in, on this side of this line if humans are eating food. So let's say I, I crossed the line, I approached, and the human got up and marched at me, and I immediately turned sideways. But the border line is over here. I'm still in no dog zone. So the, at this point, the human would ignore me and keep on marching at me and would stop at the line. This is how we establish an arbitrary boundary or an invisible line. So we can do this with our front door. We can do this with an invisible line around the baby who is in a high chair that's eating food to the room, to the nursery. So we, we can force it by marching very, very deliberately, very suddenly up to that line. And as soon as the dog crosses the line, it's like the game of tag. They're on base. They're safe. Then we take a step backwards. If I'm established an arbitrary boundary, the dog starts to move forward. I would hiss before I got to the line. If it crossed the line, then I would rush towards it again. Now, when you're doing this for like, the door or around the, uh, the doorway into the, into the nursery or something like that, you're gonna probably do a lot of this. Dog comes forward, step back, step back. Dog comes forward, you step. But when you're doing this, when I move back, I take a pause of about a quarter of a second, take another step back if the dog stays in place. Stays in place again, take a step back. Anytime the dog sits or lies down, you wanna signify that I really appreciate that because when a dog sits, it's saying I'm challenging you less. When it lays down, it's saying I'm giving up. So if the dog, if you're doing this sort of thing, the dog sits, take a big step backwards right away to communicate, I really like that sit. I appreciate you not challenging me anymore. All right, so that's the third consequence. The fourth consequence, the last consequence of my four escalating consequences is to give the dog a leash timeout. Now to accomplish this, I grab a, a straight leash and I attach it to the dog's collar. Now we have a good sized dog here, about the size of a lab, and so I would step on the leash about three feet away from where it attaches to the dog's collar. Now, when I do this, the dog is, some dogs will throw a temper tantrum and protest. That's fine, if it does, just let it do it. It's a good way to burn energy. When it gets done, it will sit down as far away as the leash will allow, and it'll be a tense leash. If I leave that tension on the leash, as soon as I take my foot off the leash, the dog feels it, and it's gonna go back to what it's doing. So if the dog sits here, and this is the foot that's on the leash, I'm gonna take this foot and slide it towards the dog to take the tension off of the leash. And I do that right after it sits down. Now, I'm not telling it to sit and I'm not telling it to lie down. If I do that, the dog's just following command. If I do this, if the dog does that on its own, it's saying I'm challenging you less or I've surrendered. So as soon as the dog sits down, I slide the, my foot to take the tension off the leash. Usually a minute or two later, sometimes several minutes, it will lay down. Now, a dog can lay down like this. That's different. We want it to lay down and have a nice, calm energy. If it lays down, it's nice and relaxed. Then I very subtly take my foot off the leash and I try to do it so the dog even, doesn't even notice that I did it. Now at this point the dog is free, but it's, the leash is still attached. Now, I always tell people it's dangerous to leave your dog on a, a leash that's it's dragging around unsupervised because it could get caught on something. But if the dog goes back to doing the wrong thing as it runs by, you can step on the leash and reapply the consequence as long as at the end you're supervised. If a couple minutes go by though and the dog doesn't go back to the wrong thing, then we take the leash off. It's not a quid pro quo. And what we're saying is if you're gonna be defiant, you lose all freedom. And if you, to uh, recap of this, before you did the wrong thing, I hissed to warn you not to do it. You came back and did it again, so I stood up. You came back and did it again, so now I marched at you. You came back and did it again, so now you're being defiant and you lose all freedom in the house. And freedom is restored when you return to a completely calm and balanced situation. I'm not gonna punish you, I'm not gonna yell at you. I guess you could consider the, the restraint a punishment, but I consider it a consequence. So we're just gonna be doing it very dispassionately. It's just, this is what's gonna happen. And if you do it with good timing consistently, after a while, you, after, at first it's gonna be hiss, then stand up, then march, then leash time out, then hiss, stand up, march. You won't need the leash. Then it'll just be hiss, stand up, then it'll just be hiss. The other day I had my black lab border collie mix drop a live squirrel out of her mouth with a hiss because she knew I would go to the next step and I was gonna get my way. Always start with your hiss. Some people will start with standing up, you can do that, but then the rest of your life you have to always stand up. It's nice when you can be sitting there and go, and the dog turns and walks away from whatever it is. 
So those are the four escalating consequences I use to disagree with unwanted actions and behaviors.